All right, finally back here with part two. Um, this part is just gonna cover the temporary summer home into the deep fall that I set up for the animals outside. Uh, we recently moved near the end of May there. And it's been uh, a lot of work so far and a lot more to go. Um, also, something I wanted to touch on before we get into everything here. In the first video, I did say that uh, the North American wood turtle is not your typical aquarium turtle. Now, though that may be true, the vast majority of turtles are not suitable for keeping in an aquarium. Uh, there are some smaller species that can work, mud and musk turtles, but anything you're likely to find, especially at a pet store, red-eared sliders, paintings, um, things of that nature, they don't belong in aquariums, guys. So I just wanted to clear that up. It was bothering me before. So here we go. The rest of it's all just live commentary outside. Uh, hope you enjoy. All right. Hey, everyone. This is uh, what I came up with for a temporary outdoor enclosure for the young wood turtles. Again, there's eight of them. Uh, kind of a side project that took me quite a while. I'm no carpenter. But I built it off of what is going to be the pen for the three-toed box turtles it's uh 16 feet on the short side 24 on the long long way to go there but the pond shape is done i'll have that liner in there tomorrow try to level it off and start planting it up hopefully the turtles in there in under a week so like i said i'm not a carpenter but it's all pressure treated wood. I do keep it locked. Pretty basic water feature. Some rocks, fern, and some weeds that are growing on their own. A hide log. So, a little bit about this area. It differs from the old spot as far as predators go. Um, this is the side yard, cornfield over there. Neighbor behind that fence, there's the home. Backyard, there's another neighbor way over there. And then this is all woods. There's a short ravine there. And back there, pretty steep ravine down to a creek. And then about an acre and a half past that, we also have. So, going to be a lot more predators out this way, so... I'll be stepping up my game as far as uh, electric fence goes. Maybe some other deterrents. So I'll uh, get this thing open and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I had to uh, deed up. There's mosquitoes down here right now are brutal. It is dusk. Or close to it. Maybe you can't tell by the camera. I would have done this during the day probably when the turtles are more active I just honestly just don't have the time to do any of this but real simple water feature uh, once I get power ran to this main enclosure here I do have a trench line ran you can possibly see that once I lay my wire I will bring 120 volts over here for a simple pump um, once these animals grow up like you know, I don't think they'll be living in here much later than maybe mid-November. I'll bring them back inside one more winter indoors. And then next year, their main enclosure will be built, which will be incorporating some of the tree area down into this area as well. But until that point, this has suited it quite well. Simple pond liner. Um, really need to get that power in. This is a mosquito factory. But uh, just a basin of water. A couple of uh, tiers to it. The moss I just dug up out of the side yard here. Some of it's doing really well. Some of it is just kind of hanging in there. We've got some weeds growing through here. Um, Nothing too special, just some some canyon rock, I think. I bought it a long time ago. A little bit of gravel. Um, 
Over here some granite boulders, a fern. Got from my dad. Out of his yard. Doing really well. I think it's called a woodland fern. Not sure. I did have a lot of leaf litter in here, but it's all broken down. I really need to replace that. But generally the animals either bed down in this log in the pond or occasionally in these these corners like there's one right there um, let's take a quick look so they are doing pretty well out here um, you know, I didn't weigh the animals before I brought them out, and I haven't weighed them since, so. But, I'll do a little focusing. But, they've got some really good growth to them since I got them last year. I don't want to stir disturb them too much, but, I mean, he's getting, this one is getting pretty beefy. Here, sorry, bro. Now, this log, I'm imagining that most of them are going to be under here. It was one piece, unfortunately it cracked, so I need to get back down into the woods to retrieve another section. Um, that's just all the dead trees we had to chop down when we moved in. And that one there snapped in half during a storm when I was standing right over here. It scared the absolute shit out of me. So let's take a peek here without disturbing them too much. In fact, let me bust this open and uh, when I set the camera down, I want to make sure uh, I don't uh, injure anything by logs toppling around. Be right back. So I just opened it up. I said unfortunately it did break, but I've got plenty of others to, to dig up. Um, mm -hmm. So here's the remainder of them, all seven. This guy recently went for a dip. See, he's a little bit more moist to the shell. Uh, this is definitely an inquisitive lot. Uh, if it was early in the morning, I'd probably get a lot more head turns. That's when they generally get fed, although they usually don't refuse a meal. Out of the two smaller ones I mentioned in the first video, they're both here, the one on the far right and left. Um, they grew significantly better on their own very outgoing now um, something they didn't do beforehand was they didn't feed on mice um, whether that be you know just pinky mice or hairless poppers or pups whatever you want to call them they will definitely do that now yeah I know sorry I woke you guys up but you can see the size difference this is definitely the smallest animal compared to the one I was just holding but considering where we were at, you know, three, four months ago, he's definitely made some strides and it just peed on me. Can't focus in on this guy for some reason. By the way, I never buy an S7, it's a piece of garbage. Well, I definitely really disturbed him right now. Um, they were taking off for the water, one just jumped in. One thing I will say that, you know, I never offered them such a large water source before. And when I first put them in here, it was awesome. <laughs> they were all jumping in there, really enjoying it. All right, now we're back. I had to delete files. Apparently, I don't have enough memory. Another reason this phone blows. Um, I don't even remember where I was at, but animals are doing really well out here. Um, on the cool mornings, they're definitely in the sun rays. Um, sun rises up over here. Some dappled sunlight early morning. Moves behind the house, comes up. And then they get a lot of sun for about an hour and a half. It moves through here, which is going to work out really nice for this. For the box turtles, they don't need direct sunlight. So depending on the season, I'm guessing anywhere between an hour to two hours of direct sunlight and then once it moves beyond these trees we get a lot of dappled sun throughout here and this is experiencing the same thing so 
it has been brutally hot recently it's also been raining like crazy um, so I would say that they've responded pretty well with the intense heat that we've had but something like this log the rest of this enclosure it's a little damp because it did rain last night but this thing could be really dry but it is always nice and moist down here um, something to think about it's definitely what you would describe as a microclimate um, even though this thing isn't very deep either um, they go down a few inches it's going to be a bit cooler even if the surface temp you know is at you know the low 80s um, but this is the area where they would definitely hide out and today it got a little little warm and actually all eight of them were under that's the first time I've ever had all eight animals under that log that I've seen um, generally I wouldn't <laughs> dig them all up <clears throat> especially at this time of uh, of the day but to make this video I figured it wanted to show you all of them all eight of them um, as far as diet goes you can see back here they don't really care for the blueberries uh, anything meat wise right now is getting crushed mice super worms earthworms essentially I buy the super worms you know by several hundreds and I just freeze them it makes a really easy way to provide you know uh, a meal to them I can offer it on a dish, paper plate, early in the morning and walk away and get my butt to work without trying to individually feed them. But I do like to crack this open and, and, uh, and separate them when I do have time just to give them their own quick meal. But otherwise I just load up a, a dish with a whole bunch of food and they definitely get to it. Um, as far as separating them to feed them. Well, I normally would do that with the smaller individuals because they're not going to win out. They're not going to win out at the, the platter with everybody else, the big guys. Plus, they might feel intimidated, you know, which was definitely what I was experiencing early on. Uh, other than that, uh, corn on the cob, strawberry wild blueberry wild raspberry which um, we found here in my dad's property um, actually wild blackberry not blueberry um, got a lot of raspberries that grew along this edge and around all the way down that tree line but definitely they're digging the meat more than anything so um, what else so, as far as what they can find in here, on their own. We've got, you know, these uh, roly-polies, water bugs, isopods, whatever you want to call them. There's tons of them in here. Every time I see one, I just take it and I throw it in here. A snack. There's also a lot of these small millipedes, which I've actually seen them feeding on. Actually, I find more of those than anything else around this property. So I just kind of whip them in here. You know, like you know, this log's rotted away. There's all sorts of things in here that can be eaten, especially those isopods. They love this rotting stuff. Oh, there's one right there. They'll definitely root around. Crickets are out already this season. You can see the big black ones. Um, so I don't know what else there is really to go over at this time. But this is the enclosure. It's 8 by 4 Definitely uh, not a permanent home. But also something that I can uh, use in the future for other animals. Other turtles perhaps. Who knows. Um, 
I think this would be a good spot to rear young if I was ever to, you know, hatch any wood turtles or even box turtles. Um, not hatchlings per se, especially box turtles with this pond, but pretty good habitat. So I think that will probably maybe wrap up the video, at least this live commentary, something I've never done and really didn't care to do. And uh, probably visit back in uh, late summer or whenever I have some more time and give another update. You guys take care now.